Hey guys, today we are going to look at solving quadratic equations, the different methods that we have learned how to solve them, and talk about when is best to use each method. So let's first talk about graphing. Um, graphing is not really one that we're going to rely on to get exact solutions, but it is great to visualize what is happening with our equation. And remember, solutions are the same thing as zeros, x-intercepts, or roots. So if they're asking you for any of those four things, they're just asking you for where the graph is going to intersect the x-axis. And remember, on a TI calculator, you can find the solutions by graphing by hand, and then on the TI, you can use the second trace as zero. Um, but thankfully, it's a lot easier to see that on Desmos. So let's go ahead and graph this equation. It's already set equal to zero, so I don't have to worry about that. 8x plus 12. Okay, so I have a vertex here at 4, negative 4. Right, 1, 2, 3, 4. Down, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I can see on Desmos what the solutions are. They are 2, 0, and 6, 0. So there's the parabola. And my solutions I saw on Desmos, they are right there at 2 and 6. So that is graphing. We're not going to rely on it to be too accurate. We're going to use our other algebraic methods, but it is great to visualize it. So let's talk about factoring. Factoring is best to use whenever you can easily see the factors. So definitely if you see a GCF, that's going to be easy to use um, factoring. And you're just going to use the zero products property, which remember means you set the equation equal to zero. And then we will factor and then set each factor equal to zero. So this one is not set equal to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to zero by subtracting 10x from both sides. And I get x squared minus 10x equals zero. And then I see a GCF of x. And then I'm left with x minus 10 equals zero. And now I'm just going to set each factor equal to zero. So x equals 0 will be the first factor. And then the other equation is x minus 10 equals 0. So I just have to add 10, and I get that x equals 10. So my solutions here are 0 and 10. Okay, now this one is already set equal to zero and you might be tempted to just use the quadratic formula since it's a trinomial and you know the quadratic formula always works. But definitely check, especially when it's just x squared, see if you can come up with the numbers really quick because if you can, it's going to be a lot quicker and easier than the quadratic formula. So we need two numbers that multiply to six and add to five. I can think of those. Those are two and three. And then this is a basic trinomial. I don't have to group. I can just jump to x plus 2 times x plus 3. And now I just need to set each of those equal to 0. So x plus 2 equals 0. I would subtract 2 and get that x equals negative 2. And then the next factor is x plus 3. And I would set that equal to 0 and get that x equals negative 3. So then my solutions are x equals negative 3 and negative 2. So that is when it's best to use factoring, whenever those factors are easily recognizable. OK, square roots method, you want to use that if you can get the squared part isolated. So like on this one, the squared part is already isolated. Same thing here, we have a binomial squared. So isolate the squared part if it's not already, and then you're going to take the square root of both sides, and we just have to make sure we solve for both cases. So let's do that on this first one. Squared part is isolated, so I just take the square root of both sides, and I get x equals positive or negative 10. Okay, next one, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, since I already have the squared part by itself, and then I get x plus 5 equals positive or negative 9, because the square root of 81 is 9. 
And then to get x by itself, I'm going to subtract 5. And I get x equals negative 5 plus or minus 9. And now I just solve for both cases. Negative 5 plus 9 is 4. And then negative 5 minus 9 is negative 14. So the solutions to this equation are negative 14 and 4. Okay, completing the square. This is a method that is always going to work. You can use it on any quadratic equation. However, it's best to use when b is even since we have to do that b over 2 squared thing. So like this equation, I can tell that b over 2 is going to be even, even after I divide by 2. So that will be great to use with completing the square. So remember, we rewrite it like this. We want the x's on one side and the constant on the other. And then if the x squared has a coefficient, we have to divide by that. And then we're going to create a perfect square trinomial by adding c equals b over 2 squared to both sides of the equations. Then we will factor and get that binomial squared so we can solve using the square roots method. So first thing I need to do is rearrange this. I want the x's on one side and the number on the other. So I'm going to subtract 2. And I get 2x squared plus 4x equals 6. And then I'm going to divide everything by 2. And I get x squared plus 2x equals 3. Now I want to turn this into a perfect square trinomial. So I need to find b over 2 squared and add it to both sides. So I will do 2 divided by 2 squared, which is 1 squared, so 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And I get x squared. plus 2x plus 1 equals 4. Now I'm going to factor this perfect square trinomial. So I need to figure out what multiplies to 1 and adds to 2, which would be 1 and 1. So it'll factor into x plus 1 times x plus 1 equals 4. And that is a binomial squared, x plus 1 squared equals 4. And now I can solve using the square roots method. I take the square root and I get x plus 1 equals plus or minus 2 because the square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. And then I subtract 1 and I get x equals negative 1 plus or minus 2. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and then negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So the solutions to this equation are negative 3 and 1. Okay, then the last one that we're going to talk about is the quadratic formula, which remember is this and it can work for any quadratic equation. So if you are told to solve an equation with x squared and you have no idea what to do, then just use quadratic formula. So the first step is to rearrange the equation into ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And then we will substitute a, b, and c into the formula. And then we'll simplify the expression and find the two cases to solve for x. So this one is already in standard form, so I'm going to start by labeling A, B, and C. And now I'm going to do opposite B. So opposite of negative 7 is positive 7 plus or minus the square root of B squared, so negative 7 squared. Minus 4 times A is 3 times negative 6 is C all over 2 times a, so 2 times 3. Okay, I need to change my calculator here so that I can put some numbers into 
the calculator. I'm going to put this number under the radical in there. So parentheses negative 7 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 6 is 121. So I get x equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 121 all over 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, and then the square root of 121, that simplifies to 11. So this is really 7 plus or minus 11 all over 6. And now I just have to solve for both cases. So I'm going to do all of 7 plus 11 and divide it by 6. So 7 plus 11 divided by 6 is 3. And then I'll solve for the other case, 7 minus 11, all divided by 6. And I get negative 2 thirds. So the solutions to this quadratic equation are negative 2 thirds and 3.